want to talk about today is the idea behind GitPod and also GitPod in, in, um, specifically. So uh, let me get started with a problem. Uh, software engineers, um, I, I, I've been working in, you know, as a consultant for, I don't know, 10, 15 years now, been working in many different projects and, and also, you know, I've, I have seen lots of different dev environment situations and where, you know, I would, I would um, start on a new project and then I would spend kind of the first two, three days or um, in a very good case, three hours to set up my dev environment. So I, I have all the tools locally that I need in order to you know, start coding, debugging, running the application locally, um, things like that. And uh, from working with many different teams, I know that you know it, it was not only me, but it, it, it's just the, the ubiquitous thing. It's very normal for us developers that we do that. We have our local machines that that are prepared to work on the projects we are involved with. And and the problem with that, of course, is you know the, you 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 are massaging the state, you are installing the application servers, the compilers, the runtimes, the databases, and so on, all on your local machine. Probably also add Docker on top, and and that doesn't not it does not only heat up your machine, but more importantly, it it is state that you have to maintain and set up and massage over time. And when you switch between projects, you know you you have to find a kind of common denominator that works for the projects. And if you look at the um, the, the development setup, for instance, within one team. We will figure out that they are very, very different depending on at what time the, the member join, for instance, you know, the documentation was different, the state was different, um, and, and also generally how, you know, what kind of advanced uh, things they did there. So this is a kind of problem we want to solve. We, we really want to find a way to where you could apply lessons learned from Dev environment or from from infrastructure as code, and we apply that to dev environment. So you would describe what what needs to be done in order to get into what we call the ready to code state. So you can really start typing and coding and debugging and and so on. So that, let's have a look at you know the current process. You when you want to start coding. You have to go through all these things. You know, you do Git checkout, you update your local dev environment, you need to download the uh, dependencies, install tools, you need to run the build, like inflate your source code, also do code generation and so on. Um, and, and, and all these things, right, that, that I just mentioned. And the solution we propose with GitPod is that you would describe in a de declarative way what are all the things you need, but also, you know, reuse um, descriptions that are out there in the world, like Docker, or just shell scripts and so on. And if you can specify all that, then a system like Gitpod can prepare these dev environments in advance. So you don't have, you know, you don't have to even um, do anything manually, but also you don't have to wait for, um, you know, watch this process running through. You don't have to wait for, for all the things because that can happen ahead of time. And so it's best shown in a, just in a demo. Um, the idea behind GitPod is that you start dev environments from, you know, whatever situation you are in, when um, you like, uh, how to explain that best? Like from different context, you know, you are, for instance, you are on, on your GitHub project, right? This one, and you say, okay, I just wanna start coding on the main branch, so, or the master branch, and then, yeah, you can do that. You just click the, the GitPod button that is integrated through a browser um, um, extension here. So when you click it, what it really does is it prefixes the URL you have here, the, the GitHub URL, it prefixes it with GitPod IO hash. And that's all that the button actually does. So you can do that yourself right now. You can go to any 
GitHub project and prefix the URL with this gitpod.io hash, and it will immediately start a dev environment for you. And so um, I'm not sure what's going on. Probably something is slow here. Thanks, actually. I've never seen that on this stage, actually. I don't know, maybe that's the screen sharing. Uh, let me try again. All right. Yeah. I'll use this one. Um, OK. Oops. I clicked too fast. All right. Uh, so sorry about that. I, I, I guess there was some, some hiccup in the connection. Um, so you saw I, I clicked here, and I got now a dev environment on this project on the main master branch. And you see the, the web application is already running. right? So I, this is a, it's a Spring Pet Clinic example. And I can just go and use it. And it runs this code that is, was cloned here and actually already built. So if you scroll up, this lock message, you see there is, you know, the whole build is there, like the Maven build, everything is ran through. But because that would take a lot of time, like in this case, six minutes, um, you know, this was done ahead of time for you. So what Gitpod does, it, it registers a webhook on your Git repository. And then when someone pushes, for instance, to the main branch, um, Gitpod knows, okay, you know, uh, after the push is before the next commit, so to say, and, and, and it will prepare the dev environment for the next um, edit already. And so when I get there, I don't have to wait for the build and so on. And the cool thing about that is that I can just go ahead and, you know, start multiple dev environments. Like I started here one on the pull request because I'm interested in reviewing this code. so I you know, start another dev environment. And so now I have two dev environments running um, side by side. And so they are different because one is looking at this branch here, which is a PR. And the other one is looking at the master branch. And the idea behind that is that you don't have a single dev environment per project anymore, but you use ephemeral dev environment. That means you know, whenever you need a dev environment, you just spin it up, you start using it, and then when you are done, you just close the tab and you, you, you forget about it. So you don't have to go back at all. Um, of course, you, you know, you, you, for instance, here, what you would do is, I don't know, you would uh, probably do some changes, you know, uh, and, I don't know what to, what to change now here, um, but I uh, say hello, so whatever. And you would here in the source control, you see that you know you have this change, and then I would commit, create a commit, test, um, and then I could of course create a new branch, and then push that branch. And now that that change is gone, and I'm done with my uh, repository here or my, with my workspace here, so I can just close the tab, and I'm back to you know my my GitHub project, and here is is my change, and it's you know I I could also in case I would later find out I want to go back and do something else, I start a fresh dev environment again. So this is you know how how it works, um, and what we run here is is a container where you specify, you know, in the root, you have a gitpod YAML, and that is basically what drives the automation. So you specify what Docker image you need, or we can also provide a Docker file, and we will auto-build that for you. And then you also specify what tasks should be executed. The init task is the stuff that runs in during the pre-build phase, and the command is the stuff that runs when you actually start a dev environment. So you see here we have the Maven build followed by um, a Java process starting um, the web server. You can also provide some uh, port mappings. Uh, as you see here, you can 
install VS Code extensions, like uh, specify what kind of extension you want to have. Um, and this one should obviously have the Java extension installed. Um, and, and, and configure some other things. So in the end, you know, everything is described and, and, and all everyone in the team gets the same environment um, over and over again. But also, it is versioned alongside your code, so which this is also important. You can go back in time and, for instance, start a dev environment on an old branch one year old or so. It will still work because, uh, you know, it will pick up that configuration you used to have at that point in time. So if you, for instance, used a different database at that point in time or a different version of the compiler and so on, uh, that's all done. You know, you just spin up a dev environment. Everything is prepared as, as you need it for that um, commit. Um, so this is obviously an example project. I opened here the GitLab open source project. So GitLab and GitLab, it's a bit meta. Um, and you see this is not a non-trivial application. And the Gitpod YAML they have is a bit more involving. Like this is not an example, but it's a, it's a real world uh, thing, so to say. So they have a specific Gitport workspace image they are continuously building based on their um, development kit, which is called GDK. And then they run multiple terminals in parallel. Like every dash here denotes one terminal. Uh, so they have two. One uh, runs the GDK uh, helps. This is the main thing. And then the other runs a bunch of other things. Stuff, this init stuff again is running in the pre built phase. This command is running. And when you start the dev environment, you know, they have a bunch of more port mapping, also some VS Code extension. But it's still, you know, it's not super extensive. But with this, they were able to reduce what usually takes an hour or so for contributors to onboard in this open source project to down to um, four minutes. It's still four minutes, which is super long because um, they, they cannot enable pre builds yet because we in GitPod uh, need to ship a feature that allows um, caching previous results. Um, so currently, the pre builds would be clean slate pre builds all the time, which is not doesn't work for a large project like GitLab with uh, such a high frequency of commits. You know, you, you run one build and then the next commit comes in and, you know, it, um, you never end up with a with a result there, uh, but that's a feature we uh, we are currently um, working on, and and that will land soon, and then we will be able to reduce that to under a minute. Um, so the IDE you see here is VS Code. Uh, it does it's really stock VS Code. So it does all the things um, uh, you would you you know from VS Code if you use it locally. We are also working on um, on a mode that allows you to integrate other IDEs. So you, uh, with like other web IDEs, you can easily start from here because you have a Docker. Like I, I you know, I could spin up a Docker uh, container here, and then I, I would get Jupyter Notebook or so. But um, a more interesting uh, approach is to allow SSH uh, connections. Where like VS Code already has a remote SSH mode that works nicely, and JetBrains is also working on one. And with that, we will be able to, you know, you, you use your local IDE, and it is just the same as you would expect. But then it it calls into GitPod uh, workspaces, and the terminals you see in your IDE would be um, running in that um, workspace, and also all the language. Um, indexing or like basically everything would run in that container and it it, um, it really you know is a, is a, is a nice hybrid of having a local application but still the benefits of um, a container based ID right so let's go back to some slides um, I want to reiterate on, on, the, on the core features. Uh, so the first very important bit here is that we automate um, creation of dev environments. 
uh, you describe that as code and you version that alongside your Git uh, source code. And that means um, you can always reproduce a dev environment. And so there is no, you know, no configuration drift anymore where you have these works on my machine scenarios, for instance. The pre-built dev environments is also something um, that is, you know, you you need to get wrap your head around um, how it works. Basically, is if you look at this uh, slide, you you see the first bar. That is the time that someone commits a change to the remote repository. With Gitpod, we would immediately start like a CI system, um, prepare a dev environment, and then at the end, when that is done, we we take a snapshot of that result. And that result, uh, that snapshot is waiting there for someone who wants to open this project in a dev environment. And then we just inflate this, this snapshot in, in front, like in, in the cloud, and give you a web IDE to access it. Um, like traditional web IDEs, like all other um, solutions here, don't do this. So it, it means you have to always go through a whole, the whole thing and wait for that. And if you do that, then you spend too much time. So it is inefficient to do really do this disposable dev environment environment thing, like this ephemeral, where you would start multiple workspaces and just delete them again when you don't need them anymore. In order to be able to do that, we want to you know invest no time into these environments other than real source code editing, which we push into Git then. Uh, so that's really key for this ephemeral idea or disposable. And the the value in having disposable dev environments is you can always start fresh. So really, you don't you don't have this configuration drift. Um, you can work in parallel, which means like obviously multitasking is is a is a huge challenge for the bind. But if you you know if a colleague approaches you wants to have a code review, uh, and you are working on a feature. Uh, Currently, then what you usually do is you know you you fetch and then you change um, the branch and you need to rebuild and so on. Or some people have you know two copies of the Git repository locally, one for feature development, one for code reviews or something like that. With Gitpod, you don't have to think about that at all. You just you know start a dev environment, use it for whatever you want to do, and then you close it and um, you're good again. And of course, also. And uh, with disposable F1, it means we continuously apply the automation, which is also crucial. If you have, you know, this automated setup that is only executed when a new team member joins, you know, whatever, how often that ever is, it almost always is broken at that point in time because it's not executed. And if you continuously execute this F1 all the time, it gets updated and it works for you know, it either works for everyone or for no one. That's the point. And so, if it works for no one, it's a real deal breaker, and therefore, uh, the whole team cares and and really, you know, uh, maintains this um, setup. You really want to have a really a good experience there. Uh, the contextual dev environment is uh, just you know, um, instead of Gitpod, it's not kind of this product where you go to Gitpod and then you start your single dev environment. But because of the um, uh, disposable dev environment idea, we say, well, wherever you are, if you see code and you want to give it a spin in a dev environment, just prefix it with Gitpod IO hash. And then Gitpod will, will understand that URL and do the right thing. That means um, mostly like checking out the right branch, but also, when you do a code review, um, then it always opens also the, 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 the changes on the left already. So it, it, the, the pull request is initialized for you. You can do the code review. So such things, so just uh, small, nice um, additions. Having a browser interface is, um, you know, makes it very remote friendly portable so you it works on an ipad also it works on any kind of small machine so wherever you are you are you have access to your dev environments you probably know this from all other SaaS servers we use daily like you know basically i think many of us 
for many of us, it, IDEs are somewhat the last um, heavily used local applications. And so you benefit from all the things that you benefit when you use uh, Google Drive or uh, uh, Google Docs or something like that. And including collaborative uh, development, so you can, of course, share workspaces and look at that uh, with multiple uh, people. But also uh, what's nice in Gitpod is you can create a snapshot. Uh, so you are in a dev environment at any state you have there. You can create a, you know, say, give me a snapshot and you get a link. And if you can share that link to anyone and then, you know, at any point in the future, when someone clicks that link, they will get an exact same copy of that state um, uh, created. So it's also nice for, you know, building examples, answering stack overflow questions, things like that. Um, so one of the you know main uh, questions I get, and so that's why I'm covering it here, is like, what about the differences, like personal taste, personal differences in dev environments? Like my colleague likes you know to configure uh, her shell uh, very different to I like I don't use shells but I use a lot of plugins or extensions in my IDE and, and so there are all these differences. Um, so with Gitpod you you have two levels of, of, of kind of state or configuration lifecycle. One is the workspace that is what you share between the project. So everyone who works on the on the on the project and will get that what's written down in the Gitpod YAML. That makes sense. Like it's 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 like the project settings or, or something like that. And then on top of that, Gitpod also allows you to have user settings. So you you know you can have VS Code extensions installed on the user level where with specific themes, for instance, that makes sense, or key mappings and, and things like that. So we and, and then we apply one of the on, on top of the other. So you you have best of both worlds. You can share what, what you know what's common and, and what what everyone needs in order to have a decent dev environment. And then in, you can top your uh, nice layer on top. That said, I, I think lots of your colleagues would really uh, be interested in your very powerful um, bash setups. So maybe you would try to share that in the future also. Um, I think, yeah, with that, um, I, I ran through the presentation um, and I'm happy to answer some questions. <laughs>